All right, so what we have today is a lesson in playing out from the back. Why is it important? How do we do it? And what happens when we do it well? So on screen you see uh, a picture of Manchester City, and you can see I've drawn some arrows, some circles, just how Manchester City uses possession and uses passes in order to work out from the back. And we're going to look at an animation, and we're going to look at a whiteboard, just to try and figure out how does passing out of the back work, and why is it effective. So, let's take a look. What we have here is just a minor animation, and you'll see the red team has possession of the ball starting with their goalkeeper, and the orange and purple team is attempting to defend. So, goalkeeper playing out from the back, playing out very slowly to 11, and we'll pause it right here. So, before anything else happens, you'll see 10 has dropped back just a bit, and there are passing angles open for 11, right? 11 can go to number 9, he can play it square to 12, and perhaps even 12 can drop off just a bit to right here, and that would open up a pass to here. 11 also has the open ball to 10. And then a pinch, he probably could get it to 63, right? But, obviously, teams are never still, so as the ball comes in, you can see now the orange and purple team are trying to press. So, as I go ahead and remove the ink very quickly, you can see the orange and purple team is pressing, and now they're pressing. But you'll notice, as they pressed, 8 cut off the pass to 10, right here. Can't do that anymore. 12 is still open, right? And like I said, 12 should probably drop off just a little bit to open up this pass here. But 9 is kind of cutting that off. And the pass across one's own goal is never the smartest idea in the world. And 7 cut off number 9. So what's happened is now there is an opening up to 89. So it doesn't have to be a we're going to play tap, 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 short little 5-yard passes to get up the field. It can be we will threaten the five-yard passes and then bypass it all with one pass all the way up the field. Three players, three defenders, completely cut off by one pass. Now, is it possible that the defenders would be higher up the field? Sure. But at the same time, it's still opened up for that last player. And not just that. 89 spread wide, right? You can see he's pretty close to the touchline. So by spreading wide, that forces defenders to cover more space. When you force defenders to defend more space, you not only tire them out because they have to run more, but you open up gaps between them because it's much more difficult to defend 50 yards than 10. So let's look at a whiteboard style. So here, again, we have the ball starting with the goalkeeper, and you'll notice that as we look at it, I have the team set up, the blue and white team is in a 4-3-3, and let's say that they just got a shot off, keeper caught the ball, and is looking to restart play. So the red team will be looking to play it out from the back. So at this point, the defenders want to spread wide. Right? And the keeper doesn't have to stand in the middle of goal. Right? But the defenders want to spread wide. And the reason why is because it's very difficult to defend edge to edge. Right? It's many yards across the field, and trying to defend all of those yards is difficult. And even if the midfield squeezes, right? you see there's kind of a six-man squeeze going on, there's still only so much space that a team can cover. So spreading out is of paramount importance. So let's say that 34 rolls the ball out to number 12. And at this point, number 12 has a few options. He can either play the ball to 5, he can play it to 7, or he can carry the ball himself. So which is the ideal option? Well, that is entirely based on what the opposition presents, right? If number 10 steps in front of 5, and number 11 steps to 12, 7 is wide open. You play the ball to 7. Now 7 has the chance to bring the ball up the field. If instead, as we return, 
number 11 steps to 7 and 10 pressures, then 12 can go to 5. Now, perhaps 10 steps to 5, 11 steps to 7, 12 simply has to take the ball up the field, and at some point, either 10 or 11 will step, and 22 is open. Or, if 10 steps, 5 takes one step back, and now 5 is open. And at this point, 11 has the red team 11 will be shifting over, because the ball is on the red team's right side of the field, so there's no need to be completely shifted over, so the rest of the team will shift and provide five with options. Let's back it up again. Perhaps, instead of pressing, the blue and white team says, no, that's okay, you can have it, right? And just backs off to get into a defensive shape. Well, if that's the case, then 12 steps forward with the ball, and the line moves with him. And the midfielders need to move accordingly, right? Standing in unoccupied spaces, right? Making sure that whenever one of the blue and white team does decide to press, there is an option available. 12 to 5, 22 is cut off by 11. So 22 is not in the correct space. 22 needs to step here. Now, pass to 22 is open. The pass to 7 is open. If 9 moves to cut off to 5, you retreat. And 12 has the open pass to number 11. In theory, even, he could go back to the goalkeeper and you restart the process again. There's always options, but players must keep moving, right? If 9 goes to cover 5, 5 can't just stand there, right? Perhaps he takes another couple steps this way to try and pull five, pull 9 even farther out of position. At that point, the red team number 9 steps into space, and either 7 has to go with him or 6 has to go with him. If 6 goes with him, there is now all of this space left behind 6. And, as we've already denoted, number 12 has a number of opportunities. Number 5 is now cut off, and maybe 22 is cut off, or we'll say 11 and 10 are very depressing. But now 63 is open. And 11 is still by himself, so perhaps they shifted quickly to 11, and now everyone has to scramble over because there's 1, 2, 3, 4 players on the blue team's left-hand side, and only two players on the right. That's numerical superiority. So, even playing one, two, three passes, and retreating will pull a team apart. One more. Let's say 11, the red team 11 has the ball, right? And this is something that I want to impart on any player that's looking to really advance their game. There is no shame in playing backwards. There's no problem with that. More importantly, even if you play backward, there is purpose to it. Watch. If number 10, or sorry, number 11, plays to the red team number 9, the blue team number 9 runs after number 9, and the red team retreats to 11. Now, 9 goes after 11, and 11 goes to 5. And just like that, you've made number 9 run 10, 15 yards, and now he's out of position, because he started here, right? Cutting off that pass to 5, but as that pass came into 9, charged him down, ball back, charged him down again, 5 is wide open. Two passes opened up the new player, and it was not a diagonal pass of any sort, it was a pass to 9, and a pass back, right, again, goes to 9, chase down, back to 11, chase down, 5 is wide open, back and forth, and a player came wide open, nobody moved, now, obviously you would want to be moving at the same time, right, maybe 5 would want to drop off a little bit, make that pass a little bit easier on number 11, 
But regardless, a simple pass back and forth of five yards opened up space, right? Similarly, if 11 was to go to number 10, right? Play that pass to number 10, number eight charges him down, 10 goes back to 11, number nine charges him down, red team number nine is wide open. Or if number nine charges down, or it goes to number five and number eight charges 11 down, nine's wide open. And just like that, number 10 is now also wide open because eight had to retreat to cover five. Three man games. One, two, three quick passes, five past a man. Very simple, very easy, but the simple things are hard to do well. So these are the things to notice.